Hi, thank you for taking your time for my session, Productionizing ML with MLOps and Cloud AI. I'm Kaz Sato, Developer Advocate from Google Cloud Team. In this session, I'd like to discuss these topics. First, I will introduce what is MLOps. And then I will discuss how you can build a scalable machine learning development uh, platform that, is, that can be shared with the MLOps team and also data scientists. And then I will discuss what are the gaps between the POC system and production system. And then wh why it is important to establish data and model validation practices. And also machine learning lifecycle management. So what is MLOps? I started talking about MLOps like three years ago. The, uh, the reason why I started discussing this topic is that I, I learned so much about the uh, operating the machine learning system from some senior machine learning engineer at Google who has been supporting the, one of the largest machine learning system at Google for over 12 or 13 years. He said, the launching the machine learning system is the easiest part. The operating is the hardest part because the real problems with the machine learning system will be found while you are continuously operating it for the long term. So we thought the practices and learnings of DevOps can also be applied to the machine learning systems. DevOps is all about unifying a software development and software operation by advocating the automation and monitoring at all steps of the software construction. Likewise, you can introduce the same practices as DevOps to the ML uh, machine learning systems. It is all about unifying the machine learning system development and machine learning system operation by utilizing the automation and the monitoring at all steps of the machine learning system development. And the topics I will cover in this session is, are, are based on these uh, publications from Google. The first publication is Machine Learning, the High Interest, Interest Credit Card of Technical Debt. This paper is uh, written by the uh, machine learning engineers and software engineers from the uh, Google, uh, Google software team. And another important uh, publication is Rules of Machine Learning, Best Practices for ML Engineering. I'd like to pick up some of the important learnings and practices from these publications. So uh, let's move on to the next topic. How you can build a scalable machine learning development environment. Starting with the anti-pattern code, depending on the ML superhero. I have seen this anti-pattern happen in a couple of my uh, the past clients. The large enterprises and the large organizations usually have a, a few numbers of the ML superheroes who can be an ML researcher, who can read all the machine learning papers and uh, understand what's happening in the machine learning models. But also, they can write the Python code or Go code or Java code to build a data uh, warehouse systems or ETL systems or the serving or infrastructures for the machine learning production system. And also, they can be a product manager who can define the machine learning system requirements, specifications, and discuss the, what's the benefits and the downsides of those machine learning systems, uh, talking to the uh, stakeholders and business executives. And they do that from POC to production phase. And uh, these people are great people. Machine learning superhero is awesome, but it doesn't scale, right? uh, especially for the uh, enterprises and large organizations because there are only a couple of such people who can do everything. Instead, if you want to really uh, build a scalable machine learning AI adoption in enterprises, then you, can, you have to build a scalable team with the multiple roles, like data engineers, data scientists, ML engineers, and so on, so that you can split the responsibility into each roles. For example, data engineers should be responsible for ingesting and ETL uh, of the training data 
uh, working with the data warehouse and do the uh, set up the large scale uh, pre-processing against the training data. Whereas the data scientists and ML engineers can focusing on the designing the optimal machine learning model that can achieve the highest accuracy. And also the ops engineer can focusing and uh, can be responsible for the uh, deployment deployment of the machine learning model and keep operating the large scale and, and robust and available uh, serving infra infrastructure with the continuous training and continuous monitoring setup. Let's think about one scenario where the data scientist is using a cubicle of an ops team for asking uh, for, to ask to build a machine learning system for his uh, machine learning model. So what are the, uh, the problems uh, they would face? One anti-pattern you want to avoid is a black box problem. This is not the black box problem of the machine learning model itself, but I'm, I'm talking about a black box problem that could be happening in the production machine learning system where a researcher understands what's happening inside the machine learning model, but the researcher doesn't understand what's happening in the production infrastructure. Likewise, the ops engineer uh, does not understand what's happening in the machine learning model, but he understands uh, uh, what's happening in the infrastructure. So that there's uh, some black box, uh, or there's nobody who understands everything starting from the machine learning model behavior and also behavior of the, uh, the serving system. And you want to, you may want to avoid this kind of the, uh, the uh, pitfall. ML technical debt paper says at Google, a hybrid research approach where engineers and researchers are embedded together on the same teams has helped to reduce this source of the friction significantly. Let's think about another scenario where the ops engineer think thinking about how you can build a, a good machine learning platform for development and deployment that could be shared by the shared with the data scientists and ops team. One solution could be using uh, cloud services. And these are the reasons why uh, we introduced the product called AI platform as a Google Cloud service. AI platform provides the multiple components and modules for, for that could be shared by the multiple stakeholders and roles, like a data scientist, ops teams, machine learning engineers, data engineers, and so on. And also these components and the functionalities can be easily integrated with the other data products from Google Cloud, such as BigQuery, Dataflow, uh, Dataprog, and so on. Another product I'd like to introduce here is TensorFlow Enterprise, which is a commercial version of the TensorFlow distribution that is fully optimized and supported on the Google Cloud platform. To understand the benefits of the TensorFlow Enterprise and AI platform, let's think about the scenario where the data scientist is, uh, want to have uh, one more GPU service for the, his uh, training jobs. He wants to have a GPU server with everything installed, like a CUDA drivers, everything, and, and he wants it as soon as possible because he wants to finish their training job uh, in a couple of days. But it's really hard for the ops team to take that kind of responsibility, procurement of the GPU server and provide technical support for those GPU servers is not so scalable because there could be uh, many challenges. For example, the on-premise GPU servers are expensive and usually takes a couple of weeks for the procurement. And also, in early days of the data scientists, the data science, each data scientist would spend their times on installing the CUDA drivers, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Matplotlib, NumPy, everything from scratch so that that are not managed by the ops team or technical professionals. And also there could be a problem of the over provisioning of GPU resources. Maybe one data scientist would need eight GPUs right now, but other data scientists would have uh, unused GPU servers 
uh, forgotten because the project has finished like a couple of weeks ago. So for the Ox team standing standpoint, it's really hard to provide a technical support for these unmanaged uh, servers or the resources. Instead, one solution could be using the TensorFlow Enterprise on Google Cloud, especially the Deep Learning VM or DLVM. DLVM, DLVM is a standardized VM image for data scientists. It's a virtual machine images that includes the all the uh, everyday tools that is used by the data scientists, such as the uh, TensorFlow 1.15 or 2.1 or 2.3, or the CUDA drivers, NumPy, Scikit-learn, Jupyter Notebooks, PyTorch, and everything. So the data scientists or ops teams don't have to spend their time on installing those softwares from scratch. And also, because it's a VM image, it can be easily uh, instantiated with Google Compute Engine or AI Platform Notebook. And uh, not only the, the standard GPU instances, but also you can create a preemptible GPU with those virtual machine images. Preemptible GPUs provide the uh, low, low priority GPUs with the uh, higher cost performance ratio. So uh, it's possible that the uh, preemptible GPUs instances could be shut down maybe a couple of times in a day. But if you're using the, uh, the, uh, those GPUs for the batch, batch processing based training jobs, it's not, it's not a big problem for you. But the, the, the benefit you could get is the cost. Preemptible GPUs is one third of the cost of the standard GPUs. Let's take a look at the, uh, the, one is, uh, the demonstration video of the uh, DLVM. To start using DLVM, you can just open the Cloud Console and look for the uh, Deep Learning VM on the Marketplace. So that you can easily find the uh, DLVM images and creating uh, uh, Google Compute Engine instances with it. Specifying the, the version number of the TensorFlow and the, how many uh, CPUs or GPUs you want to use, and that's it. In this case, it specifies the number of CPUs and create, uh, push the create button so that you will be getting the, all the software stacks uh, for the data scientist and uh, the virtual machine images, uh, virtual machine instances within a couple of minutes. Another product I'd like to introduce here is AI Platform Training. This is a managed infrastructure for the large scale distributed training. And again, the, all the software stacks are already installed, so you don't have to spend much time on installing softwares or, or the building the large-scale cluster with uh, uh, Kubernetes engine and so on. Instead, you can just press a couple of the buttons to invoke the training job on the AI platform training so that you will see maybe a couple of GPUs or tens of GPUs uh, running uh, as a distributed training to finish your large-scale training jobs in a very short time period. And also, it includes the state-of-the-art automated hyperparameter tuner that is uh, originally used for the internal use cases in Google's machine learning engineering. So you can get the state-of-the-art the Google's uh, own the, the hyperparameter tuner for, for finding the best hyperparameters for your machine learning models. So that was the uh, problems you can solve with the, the production development system. So what about the problems you can find uh, on productionizing the uh, serving system? There are many gaps between the POC and production systems. Let's think about portability and scalability of machine learning system. For example, data scientists would ask ops team where uh, they can support the 10 million users with the uh, uh, prototype code. But usually you cannot, not, you cannot do that because prototype code uh, usually are written without thinking about the scalability or the portability. You, have to, you may have to maybe add like 100,000 lines to it for the scalability and portability. There are many gaps between the POC and production to fill the gap, uh, to uh, 
there are many gaps between POC and production systems, such as the dependency on the local environment or dependent on a certain data scientist, whereas production system, you have to make everything portable and shareable. And also, you cannot rely on, on a single notebook instance. Instead, you always have to have a multiple instances. In some cases, you have to have like a 10 instances or maybe hundreds of instances or containers that is orchestrated with the auto scaling out or auto scaling in or load balances. Because you will be getting the, uh, the uh, maybe tens of the hundreds of incoming prediction requests from the other services or consumers. And also everything should not be depending on the fragile manual process. Instead, everything should be reproducible, automated as an end-to-end -end life cycle. Lastly, you have to think about monitoring. Because it's a production system, you would need a monitoring and alerting system. One product, uh, one product I'd like to introduce here is the AI platform to prediction. This is a managed service for the online or, or batch prediction service. And the largest benefit of the prediction service is the scalability. It provides the auto scaling feature, so you don't have to take care of the, how many instances you would need to handle, handle the current workload. Instead, it automatically adds more and more instances or reduce number of the instances based on the traffic. And also, everything can be logged into the BigQuery, the data warehouse, for the continuous monitoring. And it supports the NVIDIA T4 GPU, which is the, uh, the one of the best GPUs for the uh, uh, prediction workload. Everything is running on the GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine, but you don't have to spend much time on, on using GKE by yourself because it's a managed service. It's running on GKE, but all you have to do is, to do is uh, click some of the uh, buttons on the Google Cloud Console, and that's it. Let's take a look at, look at the one example where the uh, data scientist and ops engineer can work together for building a scalable uh, prediction platform. So you can get started with the, uh, the usual Jupyter notebook, as you can see on the screen right now. So in this uh, video, data scientists will be uh, using the, uh, the usual uh, Jupyter notebook environment for training the uh, scikit-learn machine learning model uh, using the BigQuery SQL. Uh, you can execute some query on BigQuery and download the, uh, the result set and convert it to the uh, Pandas data frame and build some training pipeline with scikit-learn. And uh, as usual, you can call the fit of function to train the model and to get the model and uh, try out some prediction with the trained model. And this is the usual scikit-learn usage. But you can upload, uh, the, the, the difference is that you can upload the uh, trained model to the Google Cloud Storage so that the uh, ops team can share the same model and deploy the model to the AI platform prediction. So that now you can have the full-fledged, fully scalable, production-ready infrastructure for, same, for serving the exactly same scikit-learn model. As you can see, uh, both ops team and data scientists can share the same notebook. Another product I'd like to introduce here is deep learning containers of TensorFlow Enterprise. Deep Learning Containers shares the same standardized software stack with the DLVM, but difference is, is that this is a container image for data scientists. So again, it has the uh, pre-installed TensorFlow, CUDA drivers, NumPy, but everything is in the containers, not the VM. So that you can easily uh, deploy the, those the containers to the uh, container runtime environment, such as the uh, Google Kubernetes engine, or the AI platform training and AI platform tra uh, prediction. So that you can get the, all the benefits with the source uh, container environment, such as scheduling of the each instances or lifecycle management of the each instances or parts. Uh, what if your uh, instances would, would have some failure? 
uh, the GK would take care of the rebooting the uh, pod or instances automatically. Well, what if you are getting the, uh, like a, a thousands of the uh, millions of the requests per each second? In that case, you can use the load balancer of the Google Kubernetes engine so that the uh, each serving request or prediction request will be dispatched to the appropriately uh, for each part for the serving. Logging and monitoring, and troubleshooting, and security. Uh, those are the all problems required for uh, required to be solved for the production system, but you don't have to spend uh, much time on solving this problem by yourself. You don't have to write like hundreds of thousands of lines of code to solve these problems. Everything is already encapsulated, provided with the container environment of Google Cloud. This is an one example system diagram how you can combine those components to build on one solution. For example, you can use the BigQuery for uh, pre-processing or ingesting data from data warehouse, uh, combined maybe with the uh, Cloud Dataflow for ETL. And then you can use the uh, AI platform training for training the, uh, uh, the uh, machine learning model uh, at large scale. Once you have, uh, have the trained model, then you can upload the model to Google Cloud Storage and, and use that with the AI platform prediction for serving. And what about performance? Maybe data scientists would test with 10K, uh, 10,000 loads, but uh, usually data scientists, the POC code, are not optimized for handling the production level training data. But ops team have to think about that. So this is where you can get benefits from the uh, TensorFlow Enterprise. Because TensorFlow Enterprise, you can, uh, with TensorFlow Enterprise, you can get the optimal performance on the Google Cloud Storage and BigQuery Reader. For example, when you are reading the, uh, some data, training data from Google Cloud, uh, Cloud Storage Reader, you don't have to change uh, anything on the existing TensorFlow code. As you can see on this slide, you can keep using the usual tf.data uh, or dataset API with TensorFlow. The only difference is that you can specify the GS colon slash slash URI for downloading data from Google Cloud Storage so that TensorFlow Enterprise binary can detect that and tries to get the highest optimal uh, performance uh, for, re for, for reading the uh, training data from Google Cloud Storage uh, read into the, uh, the TensorFlow training runtime. Likewise, uh, you can get the, uh, the optimal performance with BigQuery Reader that provides the uh, easy API client APIs uh, like you're seeing on this slide so that you don't have to spend much time on performance tuning by yourself. This is a comparison graph of the, uh, the uh, big uh, cloud storage reader performance compared with the TensorFlow 1.14 and TensorFlow Enterprise. As you can see, uh, there's a significant change on the uh, 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 significant difference between the IO performance. That means you can, pump much, you can pump much more data on GPUs and get higher GPU utilization rate. This is a benchmark result we got with the uh, P100 GPUs. Uh, with the uh, open source TensorFlow 1.14 and TensorFlow Enterprise 1.15, we observed about 30% difference uh, on the GPU utilization rate. And also technical support. TensorFlow has been an op open source tool, but with TensorFlow Enterprise uh, distribution, we provide a professional technical support. And also we provide the uh, enterprise grade long-term support for each uh, TensorFlow version, like 1.15, 2.1, or 2.3. And we provide the technical support up to three years. Next, uh, we'd like to discuss about how you can, uh, why it is important to provide the uh, data validation and model validation practices for the production systems. We'll be uh, solving this problem by using the TFX open source tool. This is an anti pattern called lack of data validation. So with the ordinary IT system, many people are writing millions of lines of unit testing code 
to make sure that the behavior of your IT system is uh, is uh, as uh, is uh, working as expected. But with machine learning system, the important behavior of your IT system is defined by the data and machine learning model you have trained with data. How do you how can you make sure that your behavior of machine learning system is working as intended? You cannot write the millions of the unit testing code against machine learning model. How do you make sure about that? Another problem you would see with the production system is training serving skill. So maybe data scientists will spend much time on the POC notebook and something. But if you bring the, uh, the same model to the production system, in many cases there could be uh, some changes or differences between the accuracies between the training data and the serving data. This happens because of the many different reasons. Uh, for, for some cases, maybe the uh, distribution of the features found in the training data and the serving data are quite different. Or there could be a difference uh, of the pre-processing or how they apply the windowing on the uh, time series data or any other slightest changes can make the uh, difference on the uh, accuracy between training and serving. So to solve these problems, we provide a solution uh, that is uh, packaged as a TensorFlow Extended or TFX. This is an open source tool developed by the, the TensorFlow team. And the orange components are now uh, published as an open source tool. So you can download uh, those components by going to the tensorflow.org slash tfx. And tfx is based on the uh, its uh, previous version that is called Sybil. Sybil has been, uh, has been uh, one of the largest machine learning production framework used in the, the uh, large machine learning uh, services in Google. And now the TensorFlow team is rewriting the, the framework as an open source tool called TFX. So many large machine learning production systems at Google, like our Google Play Teams or YouTube Teams machine learning systems, are now based on the TFX. So it's a proven technology. One of the component TFX provides is the TensorFlow Data Validation, or TFDB. Uh, TFDB helps, uh, helps developers uh, to understand, validate, and monitor the machine learning data, training data at scale. And as I mentioned, it is used already in the, uh, some of the largest machine learning systems at Google, so it's a proven framework. And the reason why TFX or TensorFlow team provided this, pro uh, this uh, functionality is that they wanted the user to treat the data errors with the same rigor and care that they deal with the bugs in the code. So some uh, changes, of the, changes of the distributions of features in training data is just like the bugs you can find in code. So actually, Google Play Team was able to introduce, introduce the data validation practice with TFX, and they were able to increase the uh, application install rate for 2% of, uh, that's an average of the all applications, by introducing the data validation. Let's take a look at how you can use the uh, TensorFlow data validation with this um, demo video. So uh, you can use the usual test uh, Jupyter Notebook environment. So as you can see in these demonstrations, in this set demonstrations, it uses the, some uh, uh, data set read from BigQuery. That is a Chicago taxi uh, data set with the old timestamp for each trips and uh, distance or payment types and so on. And by using TFDB, uh, you can easily visualize the, uh, the uh, statistics values of each features or uh, drill down into each features and distributions like uh, histograms and, uh, and so on. For example, it uh, looks like the, uh, the most of the people are paying by cash or credit card. 
So uh, this is the visualization, visualization uh, you can get with TFDB. And then you can easily find out what are the difference of the uh, distribution between two data sets, like between training data and the variation data. If you are seeing any drops of accuracy in the variation data, uh, maybe one possible reason could be a difference of the features or distribution of the training data and the variation data. So you can easily visualize those differences. And also TFDB provides the, the for detect provides a feature for detecting drift and skews. You can define and uh, what are the skews you want to detect so that the tool can compare, uh, keep watching the difference of the, uh, for example, distribution in each features. And another anti-pattern uh, we have to solve in this in production system is the uh, freshness requirements. Not knowing the freshness requirement requirements is another anti-pattern. What is freshness requirements? This is an intervals you want to uh, intervals or you want to retrain the model based on the each business requirements. For example, if you, if you are, are training a model for the news aggregation site, maybe you want to retrain the model every five minutes or maybe ten minutes. Whereas the, for the other use cases such as the recommendation systems for e-commerce. Maybe it can be a longer interval, like a, yeah, the model can be retrained every day. Or for other use cases like a natural language processing or voice recognition, maybe you can just retrain the model every one month or every year. So the thing is that you have to understand what are the intervals you have to uh, retrain the models. So rules of the machine learning paper says the knowing the freshness requirements of your system. And to solve this uh, problem, uh, we provide a tool called TensorFlow Model Analysis or TFMA. It provides the, uh, uh, compu uh, it computes and validates the variation metrics of your machine learning models. So TFMA can be used after the mach machine learning uh, model training. So one feature you can use with TFMA is that uh, it can easily uh, compare the difference between the, uh, uh, the different models, versions of models. For example, your model it has been performing so well maybe uh, one month ago, but after one month, the accuracy is uh, gradually dropping down. And now the, the accuracy of the same model uh, somehow uh, so low. So you can detect that kind of the uh, drop of the accuracy by comparing between the, the different versions of the machine learning models. And not only a time step, you can also define any other slices or segment of data sets. The one popular slice of segment of data set is the time step, like a time of day or maybe day in a week, so that you can see the, the uh, difference between those times. But you can also define other segments, such as the uh, demographic data of each user. For example, uh, your machine learning model is working so well for the uh, people in the United States, but it's possible that the same model doesn't work well for the Japanese people. Or how about the ages? Does it work well for the children or elderly people? Does it work well for the uh, di any different different kinds of the uh, genders. So by using TFMA, you can make sure define, you can define any different identity groups, identity groups, and uh, compare the uh, difference of the matrix. Let's take a look at, look at how the TFMA works. Again, you can use the usual Jupyter notebook environment, and you can start loading the sample data as you can see on the uh, video. And by using TFMA, you can easily uh, visualize the uh, changes of the matrix based on the uh, slices you have defined. In this case, 
we are, we are trying to visualize the difference of the matrix based on the timestamp for the taxi, Chicago taxi sample data. So as you can see, you can easily find the, how it, the matrix can be changing based on the timestamp. The matrix can be uh, anything like a ROC or the accuracy or F1 score and so on. Lastly, I'd like to discuss how you can establish the machine learning lifecycle management is uh, the practice in production system. This is uh, one of the popular uh, anti-patterns you can find in the production system, lack of ML lifecycle management. This happened many times in the early days of the data science. Researchers or data scientists would create a notebook and in some cases, they would bring the same notebook into the production system as is. And maybe it works so well uh, at the time of the service launch, but how about the after one year, two years, or maybe five years? Will it be keep working without any problem? In some cases, uh, the data scientist or researcher would get an emergency call from business people, like a director would ask you, to retrain the, retrain the model ASAP. But can you remember how you can rebuild the same model uh, by finding, finding some old notebooks you, you have in uh, your local laptop or something? Actually, this is not a job for the data scientists or researchers. You should be responsible. Uh, the, uh, the other roles, right, such as the ML ops, the ops team should be responsible for responsible for this kind of the job. The another anti-pattern for, for this aspect is the lack of continuous monitoring. So if you don't care about the continuous monitoring or, or alerting system, who is the first person who would notice about the, the drop of the accuracy of your model? The answer is the consumers or users of your machine learning models. So so, for example, technical support people will be getting so many uh, claims or uh, feedbacks from the consumers that the machine learning model, or for example, the recommendation is not working so well. So, the, uh, so you don't want to be the last person to to notice about the uh, the problems in production systems. So, to avoid this kind of the problems we introduced a product called Cloud AI Platform Pipelines. This is a commercial product that is based on the open source tool uh, called TFX. In TFX, uh, there's uh, some uh, product uh, components for, the, uh, for building uh, production pipeline systems. And we provide the, uh, this, uh, the product as a commercial product that is supported uh, and managed on the Google AI Platform. An AI platform pipeline allows you to uh, publish your machine learning uh, workflow with an, uh, with, within an orchestrated pipeline. So it like, works like a Lego blocks. You can take some components in the TFX and uh, connect together, combining them to build on the pipeline you want to build. And inside it, everything is running on the GKE Kubernetes engine. And we use the open source uh, Kubeflow pipelines tool, running as a managed commercial service. Uh, combined with the, uh, the metadata store, it manages the, all the metadata for the uh, data sets or hyperparameters or the models of different versions. And with the AI platform pipeline, you can easily check out what is, what is happening in the production machine learning pipeline by using the uh, user interface and console. For example, uh, what's happening for the data pre-processing or validation phase? What's happening in the, uh, the feature engineering? What are the, uh, the training processor going? And how, what are the uh, metrics you, you are getting from the training data, uh, training model, and so on? so that uh, you can easily compare the different metrics like uh, accuracy, ROC, and so on. 
on different timestamps or versions of the data sets or machine learning models. So uh, take a look at the, uh, uh, the actual live demonstration, vi uh, the demonstration video of the uh, AI platform pipelines. So as you can see, uh, you will see the DAZ or directed acyclic graph of the uh, machine learning pipeline on the user interface. And also uh, you can access the uh, lineage management user interface. And for each artifacts, uh, like a data set or machine learning models or the hyperparameters, uh, the all the lineage, like uh, what kind of the data set, set and what kind of the uh, uh, parameters, hyperparameters, and kind of the models are used for training uh, for training a specific model. Those lineages are uh, managed and, and easily uh, reproduced by looking at the uh, lineage explorer uh, in the user interface. So uh, that was the topics I wanted to cover. So first, I, do, I introduced the concept of MLOps that is based on the DevOps practices. And then I will introduce how you can build, an, uh, I, will, I discussed how you can build a scalable machine learning development environment that could be shared with the ops team and data scientists. And then I discussed what are the gaps between, between POC systems and production system, and how you can fill the gap by using the products uh, like the AI platform training, AI platform prediction, and uh, Kubernetes engine, and the DLVM and DL container images. And also one of the important uh, concepts for the production machine learning system is the data validation and model validation. And TFX is the uh, key to solve these problems. Lastly, I discussed how you can build a machine learning lifecycle management by using the tools such as AI Platform Pipeline. If you are interested in these uh, products, please go to cloud.google.com and check out the each product page of each tools. Thank you so much.